All right, guys, I got a quick one for you today. Surprisingly, and a few days earlier than I think we expected, Android 16 QPR2 Beta 3 is finally here for us to take a look at. This is one of the final beta releases before the stable version drops, so don't expect a ton of new features as a whole. I would say this update mainly focuses on big bug fixes and addresses some issues with general system performance. That said, we do have it installed on our Pixel devices, so real quick, let's go over everything new with Android 16, QPR2 Beta 3, and of course, if you want to stay up to date with all future Android content, please stick around and subscribe to the 9to5Google YouTube channel because we have so many more videos like this coming your way. First up is honestly probably one of my favorite changes that we've seen in a long time, which is a new way to add app shortcuts to your home screen. For those of you who don't know, app shortcuts are a pretty big deal in the Android world as they give you one tap access to individual actions inside an application. So with the clock app, for example, you can create a new alarm, a new timer, or start a stopwatch with a one tap shortcut on your home screen. Previously, to bring one of these shortcuts to your home screen, you would have to long press the app icon and then drag the shortcut wherever you wanted. It worked fine, and I don't think there was any major issues with that, but now there is a plus button next to the shortcuts, which makes it so much more obvious to the average person that you can add these shortcuts to your home screen. A while back, I made a general Pixel Tips video talking about the concept of shortcuts, and a lot of people didn't even know it was a thing, so I'm happy Google made this change. It should hopefully encourage a lot more people to use them, or at the very least, increase awareness of their existence. Next up, we have another small change here. If you're someone that uses the live caption feature, you should notice a new toggle within the volume slider itself instead of having to open up the whole volume panel overlay as a whole. Not much to say here. It's a nice quality of life feature for those that want quick access and hopefully for those who use it, you find it's a lot more convenient this way. Inside the vibration and haptics menu, you should now notice increment markers that stop at every quarter of the slider. Right now, this is only inside the vibration and haptics section and nowhere else in the operating system as far as I can tell. The benefit here is that you now have a visual indicator of exactly where you can feel the vibration getting stronger or weaker. This was probably added for accessibility reasons and to give a little bit more of a clear visual flow to that portion of the settings app. The widgets on the lock screen feature no longer has the when to automatically show option in the settings. In an older build of the beta, we had toggles to restrict the lock screen widgets to only show never, while charging, or while charging and upright, just like we have with the screensavers option. This had me speculating whether this feature was intended to only show while charging, which would have been a little weird, but thankfully it seems Google has confirmed this is a full-time feature based on the removal of these options, which I greatly appreciate. Plus they did move the settings page around for this feature and added a graphic, so really they're just getting the feature in a more polished state. Again, super happy to see this when it comes out in December. And lastly, we do have a few super small, really minor changes. The notification shade has been tweaked a bit as it now supports full app icons and the new Material 3 expressive containers. In the actual Pixel launcher itself, the search icons in the bar are the tiniest tiniest bit bigger. And for the last small change, it's actually a weird bug where you cannot change the lock screen clock. Nothing crazy, but I did want to throw that in there for anyone confused why those options aren't in there. Speaking of bugs, this update surprisingly focused on a lot of fixes here at or just over 15, which is great to see. Anecdotally, I've seen more comments than usual about how buggy this last beta update was, so it's good that Google is addressing user needs. There are some big ones here when it comes to fixes. The one that I'm most happy about is the return of the media player on the lock screen. At some point in prior betas, this feature stopped showing up completely, likely due to a bug, but it is 100% back now. And there's a lot more too, like resolving an issue that prevented Google Play system updates from installing, a pretty big issue if you ask me. They also fixed a ton of visual glitches like bugged home screen shortcuts that appeared as gray circles and resolved janky animations when interacting with lock screen widgets and the notification shade at the same time. They fixed a big issue with their foldable devices where users could experience extremely poor battery life due to excessive CPU usage by the launcher, which might explain why this update 
state for foldables in particular is so much bigger compared to candy bar style devices. Not to mention there's a big camera fix where taking 50 megapixel photos may have caused rainbow artifacting to appear. As I said, there are a ton more bug fixes and thankfully we did put together an article with every single change. So if I did manage to miss something here, you will certainly be able to find it via the link in the description. And that my friends is everything you should know about the Android 16 QPR2 Beta 3 update. Like I said, there isn't a ton of new features and additions here. It's mostly just bug fixes and stability enhancements, getting everything ready for the big upcoming launch. Really, all the important new items to look forward to we already saw in prior betas, at least in my opinion, like lock screen widgets, new icon theming options, custom app icon shapes, better parental controls, and a native step tracking and health connect. So everything from here on out, I'd really just expect to be typical cleanup work, nothing too crazy. If you have been following these betas, you should know this is a preview for what's expected for the upcoming quarterly platform update in December. I believe we maybe have one or two more betas until then. So if you want to be up to speed on what's new in that regard, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future updates. That said, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. What do you think of these new changes? Is there anything you're still hoping we see from now until the stable update in December? Tell us what you think in the comments below as I'm always super curious to hear what the Android community is thinking. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd from 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.